We're here at uh, Stockholm World Water Week. Can you show us your name and tell us who you are? Yeah. Um, show, when... show it to the <laughs> Okay, can you get it? Yeah. Uwen Utu. Uh -huh. um, with the African Youth Movement. Mm -hmm. Um, an NGO in consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the UN and also an NGO affiliated to the Department of Public Information within the UN. Okay. But um, most importantly, um, we belong to the Global Network for Disaster Reduction. Okay. Yeah, it's an international group of NGOs committed to um, preferring solutions, rural-based solutions to mm -hmm. disaster risks. When we talk about disaster risks, we're basically concerned with disasters that are environmental. Okay. And what disasters have you been dealing with? Yeah. Uh, uh, predominantly in, in Nigeria, mm -hmm. it's water-related disasters. Okay. Too much water, flooding, erosion. Mm -hmm. Too less water, drought. Drought. So yeah. these are the kind of disasters that we are exposed to. So, um, but basically we've been dealing with erosion mm -hmm. and uh, flooding. Okay. Recently we've had so much flooding even in the upper part of the country mm -hmm. where rainfall is usually a problem. Yeah. And this now reminds us of the dangers mm -hmm. of the risks we face. Yeah. Climate change is real and this is the time to scale up. And how have you been uh, at, uh, helping this disaster? How, what have you been doing? Yeah, what we actually are, are involved in a project called uh, Views from the Frontline. Okay. I have a poster presentation in Workshop 4 called Views from the Frontline. And it is tailored towards the achievement of the IOGO Framework for Action, HFA. Okay. The HFA is, is a Bible. It's like a guideline mm -hmm. from, the, from the UN. Mm -hmm supposedly to be implemented by the UNISDR and it has priority for action, areas of concentration and we picked on one of those areas which deals with local governance. Okay. And so we developed a set of questions and we went towards rural communities. We targeted three sets of people, local government representatives, community representatives and civil society organizations. Mm -hmm. Basically we wanted to know what was their perception of threat? Okay. Was there real threat? And we also asked them, what has been changes in losses over the last five years? Mm -hmm. And you'd be amazed. Yeah, the result was quite interesting, challenging. Yeah. I, I tell you, young people that were involved in the survey less than 11 years, they had a gloomy perception of the environment. They have they are, they are not like, they don't have hope that disasters will change. Oh no. Which is why we need to act now. Mm -hmm. Because from what they see on TV, from what they see around them, it's not encouraging. No. The same thing with people that are above 60 years from our survey. They were not interested, they had lost it. Oh no. But we were quite, um, what would I say, we were impressed with the young people between 26 and 35, they believe change will come. That's and so it gives us the encouragement that change will come, yeah. which makes um, events like this important. I think our leaders, everybody, not just the leaders, civil society, communities, we need to wake up. We need to act. Simple things we need to do. We need to get information, local knowledge. We need to reach out to the scientific community and blend local knowledge with scientific knowledge. Because not all communities will have early warning systems. Of course, poor communities will not have early warning systems. But poor communities do have early local knowledge. That's true. So we need to utilize this local knowledge, which is there. Mm -hmm. Blend it with the information we have from the scientific community. And one of the ways we, had, we can do that is through surveys, which is what we did. Mm -hmm. And we came up with some very interesting and challenging data. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. <laughs> I'm grateful.